Oh, okay, let's try this again. G'day, stupid wavy futures here, and today, well, we're going to be looking at OSDs. Now, I've tried a few in my past. I've got some from Hobby King. I've got some like micro, minimum, minimum. I don't know what they're called. Those OSDs. I've got one, a different one in my ZMR. And they all took a little bit of programming or fiddling around to get working and I never really quite liked them that much anyway. And then my friend sent me one of these. Now this is the Power OSD and it is absolutely so simple to set up. Your grandma could do this and uh, we've seen what my grandma's like. Even she could set this up. So Granny, this one's definitely for you and anyone else who wants an OSD out there that can do a whole bunch of awesome things but it's just super simple to set up, this is definitely the one for you. So we're going to chuck the Power OSD on the bench. Uh, we'll have a look at how it comes and I'll show you how to set it up and then I'll show you some flight footage and how awesome it is. Alright, let's get to it. Alright, so before we start you're going to notice I've got these on here and you're going to say, Stu, they're not Power OSDs. And yes sir, you would be correct. So uh, these are some things that we're sort of superseding or replacing by using the Power OSD. So over here, this is the first OSD I got and this is like sort of one from Hobby King. It didn't really do its job very well and I always found it a bit buggy, couldn't take the right amount of cells and things like that. So uh, I don't even know what that's doing anymore. Then people sort of moved into these uh, micro OSDs or minimum OSDs and this is the micro minimum OSD and uh, they were fantastic and they they can do a whole bunch of things, but pretty much all I wanted was uh, a couple of simple things, and this could do more than that, but it also had all these little uh, pads and things like that, and uh, to be honest, they were quite a pain to set up and program and hook up to your laptop and a whole bunch of things like that. So now... We've got one of these. And if you also look, I've got it side by side. It also replaces this. Now, this is just a PDB you might use in your uh, in your quadcopter build. Same size, uh, that 36 by 36, the so same size as your normal standard PDBs people are using nowadays. So uh, this one, Power OSD right here, replaces all those things. So it is absolutely fantastic, and it's even simpler to set up. So before we talk about the OSD part, let's just have a very quick look at how it would replace your PDB. So if you just use this as a PDB without the awesome benefits of having the OSD, you've got your uh, positives over this side, your grounds over here, and you've also got some filtered 5 volts out just at the back here. And it also has a 10 volt filtered out at the front if you wanted to use it and not even use any of the awesome features of the OSD itself. Now uh, let's just have a look at these front pins just here because this is what is important. So this one here can tell you RSSI if you hook that up. Uh, then this is the ground for your VTX, this one just here. That's uh, the or sort of the positive for the VTX and then here is your signal cable and the same side just behind that here's the signal cable for your camera the positive sort of the voltage just here the 10 volts out for your camera and then also the ground for your camera so really nice clean setup and it's nice how it's at the front right there all right, so now for those of you who don't like programming, who want to use a, an NOSD but don't really want to muck around too much or uh, find it a little bit daunting to sort of program one of these or something, let me show you how easy it is to set one of these bad boys up. So on one side of the equation, we need to attach our camera. So with our ground negative, which is a 10 volt filtered, which makes it means it reduces the noise and gives you a nice clean picture. Uh, and also our signal wire, we just connect up our uh, camera. And now look, I've just got these pins sitting in here. Uh, they don't come soldered in or anything like that. So you can solder them if you, in if you want to. And you hook that up to, and I've got a high-tech FPV camera right here. So you hook that up to your awesome FPV camera. So that's all sitting pretty. And then on the other side, all you've got to do is hook it up to your VTX. So the same sort of layout just here. You're going to have your signal wire, your filtered 10 volt out, and also your ground. And then you hook that up uh, to your VTX just like that. That is how simple it is, forget these wires coming off here, but that is how simple it is to hook up and make sure that you have an awesome OSD with so simple that it runs through, you don't have to do any extra programming or anything like that. That is it for the setup. It is gonna take care of all the calibration, all the rest of the features, which we'll talk about just now. Now I'm gonna show you these features over some flight footage that I recorded for you guys, but one I don't have hooked up is the RSSI. So this thing can also so you, tell you your signal strength uh, of your radio and things like that and how well it's getting through to the quad. I don't have it hooked up, but that's just one extra cable just here but there's a whole bunch of other features we can talk about and also on the back you can select if it's going to run on PAL or NTSC so yeah but let's talk about the rest of the features as they happen on this flight footage right here Radio. so here we are plugging it in you get this nice little welcome screen uh, when you turn it on and it has automatic battery detection so this board's going to be able to detect whether you're running a 3s or a 4s battery and it's an adjust it's going to do all its adjustments and things that it needs to do automatically depending on what type of battery you plug in and it's also got what's called a real flight timer mode so this displays your actual flight time 
uh, and it doesn't start until the motors are actually spinning which is fantastic so it gives you a much more accurate representation of how long you've been flying around for now you may have noticed if you're a quick enough reader at the start it said RSSI disabled uh, but that's because I don't have it enabled on my little quad at the moment but uh, if I did have that little pin joined up before that we talked about, that's where you'd see also an RSSI value. Now I'm flying around on my uh, on a little 4S pack on my drone wolf pup, and you can see here that it has two volt two variables on the left, and they are your voltage and also your amp draw. Gee, I'm having trouble talking here. So yeah, they're your voltage and your amp draw, and the voltage that is the all up cell counts and the total voltage of the entire pack, and just below that is the amount of amps that you are drawing at the moment. In the middle you've got our flight timer, you can see there that's uh, dead bang sort of in the uh, middle bottom portion of the screen and then on the right you have uh, your sort of I guess your MAH counter or your milliamp hour counter and that tells you how much of your battery you have actually used and that will continue to uh, sort of cycle along as you're flying around. They'll both continue to count up and I guess your voltage on the left, your cell voltage will start to drop down. Now a feature I love about this OSD is it actually gives you two different types of battery alarm. So if you continue to fly around and your battery starts to get a little bit low, it'll flash up with a low voltage warning across the middle of the screen. And if you continue to push it and uh, going just for far too long, it's going to come up with a critical battery uh, alarm. And that's going to mean you have to land now or your quad is going to fall out of the sky. And this could be really handy uh, for everyday flying, but also for things like races and stuff like that, when uh, you might only have one turn left, so you might really, really want to push it. Or if you realize you've got a few laps left to go and you're already getting that critical battery alarm, then it's definitely time to uh, land and reassess your sort of battery options. Now in the name of science, and I didn't really like doing this, but uh, I thought it was uh, important to get an accurate representation of just how accurate this thing is. Uh, I flew around until I hit the low battery alarm and then I wanted to keep going until I hit the uh, critical battery alert. So you can see here it is just on the screen, so it's really telling me that I should be uh, should be flying. I've already been flying for about four and a half minutes, which is a lot on this 3S battery. So uh, I'm going to come into land here and I think it starts flashing up critical battery. You can see it's kind of going low on the volts definitely there. And then when I land, uh, I thought it would be a great time to run over and check its voltage straight after I landed. So I think it rests, not rests, I think it's about 9 volts just here at the moment. So we should check what that looks like on the actual uh, battery checker. Now I know it's kind of hard to read here with uh, capturing this at 60 frames per second and the battery checker and stuff like that. But it was coming on bang on the same pretty much as the OSD at 9.04 volts for the entire pack. So great job there, very accurate. So now we've had a look at what it looks like in the field and we've had a look at the overview on the bench and things like that. Let's look at some little things I think we could improve on with this. Now there's not much, I really like this product. There's just a few little things I think we could improve on. Uh, number one, this VT, I wish they would swap these VTX pins and the camera pins around. So uh, for me, I like to build it with this at the front. Uh, so this end, I wish was my camera on this side and I could plug that straight in and run that to my FPV camera and then I wish that this end could go straight up into my sort of VTX. I think that would make for a much uh, well, a little bit cleaner build if these two were just switched around the right in the other way. Now, that is unless you expect these to be the back, which is, I think, how the original designers did it. But then you're going to have a lot of cords running to the front of your camera and things like that across to the front of your cord, which I think would be a lot more annoying uh, than just making this the front and having the camera at the front of it and a little pins going up to your VTX. And then the second thing, uh, and I was actually a little bit worried about this one, these ports just here, the ground and the positive, are very, very, very close uh, sort of to these holes just here. So if unless you're using nylon standoffs or something like that, you always run the risk of having a little bit of a short or something like that. Because I know on my drone wolf pup, uh, I actually had some screws that came up and it happened, to be, it happened to be part of the actual frame design where the screws that held the arms in the stuff were also the ones that you rested your flight controller on. And because they were uh, sort of metallic screws, it was a little bit worrying. I had to take some extra precautions just here that they didn't short out by touching either the positive or the ground because carbon fiber is conductive and the screws and you pretty much didn't want the whole thing going up in a big ball of smoke. So I wish that these pads would just go back a little bit and offer a little bit of clearance and take away from these holes just here because you never know what frames people are going to put these in and uh, you don't know that all the bolts and screws like that are going to be nylon so if they could just move these away that would remove that problem entirely. So that was it. Uh, they were the only two negatives I found with the thing but overall I'm really really happy with this product and I think it's fantastic. What a great way to put in an OSD.
<laughs> so there it is, there's my review with the Power OSD. You cannot go wrong. So if you don't like soldering, definitely check this out. Uh, you won't be let down. I really, really can recommend this to anybody who's wanting to get an OSD in one of their crafts. Anyway, uh, subscribe for more FPV related content. And as always, happy flying. Hell's broken loose. <laughs> Anyone seen that 1986 Transformers movie? Oh, I've got a lot of Stan Bush playing with one of these things. You got the touch. Beauty. Anyway, we're not putting that in the room.